Jesus, nothing like the power of Jesus. There's 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 nothing like the power of Jesus. You must go. There's nothing like the power of Jesus. You must flee. There's nothing like the power of Jesus. Nothing like the power of Jesus. There's nothing like the power of Jesus. There's nothing like the power of Jesus. No, nothing like the power of Jesus. There's nothing like the power of Jesus. Oh yes. Omar, you are so welcome in Jesus' name. So Omar, we know that there is a lot behind your story, and we want to first ask you. How did you come to Hungry Generation? How long ago, and uh, what has what led you up to this point of being in the prayer line? Uh, so I was invited here about close to three years ago by a good friend of mine, Car Carlos. And well, um, I was going through some stuff even in my teen years, and it was just rough. It was a rough battle, and so I just wanted to just receive some breakthrough in the areas that I was really battling against and struggling. So can you um, just specifically tell us what were those specific areas that you were battling with? You know, you mentioned that you came here about three years ago. A friend had invited you. And just explain for us a little bit more about what were those things that you were struggling with and how God began dealing with your life in that way. Um, I struggled a lot in the area of lust. I struggled a lot in the area of lust and the area of pornography. And, and it was just a very rough, it was just a very rough head-to-head -head battle with this with this thing and it was just it, it was it was a night and day thing it was it was non-stop for me in my, a lot of my teen years can you just describe for us a little bit about that struggle you, you know it, when you you say you're struggling with pornography and the spirit of lust how did it affect you what kind of things during the day you know were causing you to to struggle well it affected a lot my performance at my job it affected uh, how I viewed myself, it affected my self-esteem, it affected my, it affected every waking moment of my life. I, I, I had trouble going some places, I had trouble looking at catalogs, I had trouble being, being on social media. I had, I had trouble with a lot of things. This, I was affected in a lot of areas in my life. So what led you to come to the prayer line last week? When did you decide that I've had enough and I'm ready for my freedom? Well, uh, bef months before prayer line, I I was struggling deeply, and I was attending a home group, and when I was attending my home group, I started to get little tiny battles that I was winning and winning, but then due to some circumstances, um, I wasn't able to attend that home group anymore, and then that's when, well, that's when, that's when all the garbage started coming back into my life, and it, it was months of just, I, I wasn't even looking forward to going to bed and getting a good night's sleep because... There were these voices when I laid in my bed that were just torment me, and it was just a multitude of them, and it was just, it was you know screams of agony. It was it was it was laughs that would mock at me. It was voice that told me that I couldn't do it. It was gnashing of teeth. It was moans of sexual pleasure. It was just all these things that really, I I was stressed. I was deprived of sleep. I I was just living this terrible terrible life. Wow. So as you say, you struggled with nightmares and depression. What was it like for you even in coming to church? Uh, to be honest, the biggest area that this hit in my life was my prayer life. I struggled to pray daily. I, I would I would come to morning prayers that we have here at church, and I and I would and I would thank God if I could last forty minutes in this place. And then, I it, it was a struggle to read my Bible. Everywhere I walked, I walked with my head down. I walked in low self esteem. I walked feeling sorry for myself. I walked in guilt and sin consciousness for a long time. So. Now tell us, how did you make that decision that you wanted to be in the prayer line, and what happened to you? So everything started when my friend Bryson shared his testimony about his breakthrough, about what happened to him. And I, as I was sitting there and listening to his testimony, there's these few words that just, they, um, they stood out. It was, it was gold. It was literally gold to me. It was a... Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. It was, it was a bucket of ice cold water, but at the same time, it was just the spark that it started it all. He said, he said, 
get fed up with it. Get fed up with it. And I took those words with me that night, and I said, okay, I have a role to play right here. I have a role to play. And, and so... And so I just started taking small little steps. I joined a home group. I joined another home group. And then I just shut down my social media. I, I took catalogs away. I started to come to morning prayer the second those doors opened. And then um, I remember Friday night prayers. <laughs> Pastor Martin, he would tell us about, you know, the importance of declaring God's promises over your life. So I just, I grabbed my Bible. I grabbed my version Bible. I would look up scripture. I would, I would, I would, uh, I would go on the search bar in my little YouVersion Bible and type in key words to see, like, what God had to say about me, what was God's opinion, what, 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 what was his say about it. Because he always has the final say in every situation. And so I started taking these practical steps, and then I saw, I saw these little victories one by one. I started to see them again. And then... Um, I, I had joined prayer line a couple of months before uh, this last prayer line, but um, I felt like I, I was getting somewhere, but it just wasn't my time. It just wasn't. It just it just wasn't the right situation. So I just I just I just stayed consistent. I did all the things that I was doing, and um, finally I built up the courage, <laughs> and then I signed up for this last week's prayer line. And then what happened before you? It was. It was surreal. I, I was conscious the whole time. I just, to be honest, I was just kind of like another spectator to what was going on. The Holy Spirit took over. <laughs> and um, I remember clearly as I was standing right here, I was just standing there in the back of my mind. I was just doing as I always did. I was just quoting scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. And I was just standing there hoping, 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 just just knowing that God was going to come through. And as the minister was just coming closer and closer and closer, I heard this voice. It was beautiful. He just said, hey, don't, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Just, just let go. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. So I just shut my mouth. I, lay, I laid down my hands. And I said, all right, have your way. And so all this happened. And it happened for a while. <laughs> and so uh, after a while, they, uh, I, I was taken to this little room over here. And then I, I, I received deliverance, you know, I received breakthrough. And the special thing about that was that I didn't, I didn't feel light as a feather. I didn't feel like I was able to fly. I didn't. <laughs> you know, as, as most testimonies are, but I felt something that was, just, that, was just, that was just as special as that. I, I felt like I finally was at the top. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Truly, Jesus Christ deserves glory and the honor and the praise for this testimony. Amen. So tell me, tell us a little bit more about that special feeling. What happened after you received deliverance? You were declared free in Jesus' name. What happened next? So after I was declared delivered, I, I, um, there was this, this, this verse in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that says, you will be the head and not the tail. You will be above only and you will not be beneath. And that day, it wasn't just a verse that I read that gave me like this 30-second emotional high that made me feel good. It was, it was the most tangible thing I could ever feel. For the first time in my life, I knew what it was like. To be on top, <laughs> I knew what it was like to have dominion. I knew what it was like not to be subdued and to be inferior and to live with this problem in my life. Wow, let's give it up for Jesus. So, Omar, it's been seven days since you've received deliverance. We want to know, how have the last seven days been for you? <laughs> they've been really awesome I, I don't have nightmares anymore I could go anywhere with my head held up high knowing that I'm the righteousness of Jesus Christ I could do anything <laughs> louder and louder somebody give it up for Jesus amen People of God, this is the power of our God Almighty 
moving and operating in this place in the lives of people who step their foot into this place the prayers of a thousand years are not lost and the prayers that we've prayed those friday night prayers that omar is talking about when we pray for the atmosphere of deliverance god almighty is coming through he's answering by fire and he's changing lives today amen amen, amen. omar thank you so much oh actually i almost forgot now that you have received this wonderful deliverance in your life and you have experienced the freedom of God Almighty in your life, what can you say to people who might be experiencing that same addiction to pornography, being controlled by the spirit of lust, and maybe walking around in that low self-esteem, especially men who are suffering in this same kind of thing? What can you tell them? Uh, the advice I want to give today is I just want to, one, I just want to reiterate the words of my friend Bryson. You, you have to really get fed up. You have to... You have to let that spark it just ignite you on the inside. Just, and, and you have to know that your God is for you. He's not against you. He's on your side. And just, and just I, want, I want you to know that God didn't make you in his image to live in inferiority. He made you in his image to, to be blessed, established, and to have dominion. Dominion. Amen. Amen. 